Hi, everybody. My name is Cheryl, and my story is a super weird one. Before we start, I gotta ask, have any of you ever felt like the odd one out in your family? Maybe everyone else likes soccer and you can't stand it? Or maybe they all have dark hair and yours is blonde? Well, if you understand what that's like, imagine it times a million, and that's how I feel in my family. Hear me out, and you'll see why. I was born into a pretty normal family. Well, as normal as anyone can be. My mom and dad were teachers, and my older sisters were just as annoying and bratty as everyone else's. We all loved each other, spent time together, and our lives were great. The only family relative I failed to get along with was my cousin Jenna. I always assumed she was jealous of me because she wanted sisters, because she was an only child, and she was jealous that I had two when she had none. Besides Jenna, however, I thought our lives would always be perfect and full of happiness, but I was wrong. When I was 13, my dad died unexpectedly of a heart attack, and obviously we were all devastated. None of us knew how we were going to move on with our lives after losing such a huge part of our world. My mom fell into a kind of rut. She stopped going to work, she stopped taking care of herself, she pretty much stopped doing anything that had mattered to her before. No matter what me or my older sisters did, we couldn't get her to take in interest in anything, not until my eldest sister flicked on the E! channel, Keeping Up With The Kardashians happened to be on, and right away, my mom was obsessed. She ended up binge-watching the entire show in her pajamas on the sofa over the next few weeks. After that, it was like we got her mom back. She started washing herself and dressing herself again. She even left the house. <laughs> I was so happy. Our family seemed like it was whole again, even if losing my dad was something we'd never get over. Not completely. But something more sinister was hiding underneath the surface. I just didn't know it yet. A year later, my mom stopped getting up for work in the morning. I feared the worst and falling back into her depression. But the truth was much harder to bear. One morning, I went inside her room and saw she was sleeping. I shook her and tried to wake her up, but she just groaned and rolled over. It wasn't working. I had to try something else. In the end, I turned on the light and pulled the comforter off of her. I told her that she needed to get up for work and that staying in bed wouldn't do her any good. But mom told me she didn't have work that morning. I was confused. She was a teacher and school started in an hour. It didn't make any sense. When I asked her about it, the answer completely shook me. Mom said that she'd gotten another job in the evenings instead. I just didn't get it. My mom had been a teacher all my life. She'd never once even hinted that she was unhappy or wanted to change careers. It, it was super strange. I asked her what she was doing now and she told me she was entertaining down at a club. I didn't really understand. Nothing seemed to make sense, but I guessed if my mom was happy, then I was happy. Too bad things became ten times worse. My mom started dressing differently and spending way too much money on designer clothes. I peeked at my mom's credit card bills and noticed she was super deep in debt. I didn't want it to carry on, but I was only 14 and I had no idea where to start. My mom was meant to take care of me and not the other way around. A few weeks later, my mom told me the strangest thing. She came into the kitchen while I was sat at the dinner table doing my homework. She told me she'd be having surgery soon and that my older sisters would be looking after me while she was at the hospital. I was really scared. My dad had already died and I didn't want to lose my mom too. My eyes became wet with tears and I reached out to take her hand. What's wrong? I asked her. She laughed and shook her head. There's nothing wrong with me, silly. It's just a little plastic surgery, she told me with a smile. I couldn't believe it. My mouth dropped open wide and I stared at her like she was crazy. She was already in debt. How was she going to afford plastic surgery? And more importantly, why? I had so many questions and no answers. When I asked her about it, she told me it was for work, but I didn't understand. What kind of work meant you needed to change how you looked? I asked my sisters and they told me to leave it. Mom was happy and that was all that mattered. You might think that things can't get any worse, but oh boy you'd be wrong. Eventually, I learned that the new job my mom had gotten was as an impersonator. She was working at a club pretending to be Kris Jenner. It was so freaking crazy. It had to be a joke, right? But when I confronted my sisters about it, they confessed that they had been working with my mom all along. They were pretending to be Kim and Khloe Kardashian. I mean, I guessed my family looked somewhat similar to the Kardashians. We had the same tanned skin and dark hair. My sisters and I were also slim, but 
Kirby, much like the sisters in that famous family, but impersonating them felt like a step too far. After all, who wanted to spend their whole life pretending to be somebody else? Now that the cat was out of the bag, I tried to get them to see that they could do something better with their time, but they were all convinced that they were happy as they were. It didn't really make sense to me, but I was glad that they were happy and that my mom found something to do with her time instead of grieving. As time went on, however, my mom's debts didn't seem to get any better. The work she did wasn't making enough money for the upkeep she had to do on her appearance. She continued to get Botox and plastic surgery. She was dyeing her hair and buying designer items to match Chris as closely as possible. My sisters weren't much better either. They were all absolutely obsessed with getting likes and followers on Instagram too. I just didn't see the point in any of it. By the time I turned 16, all three of them were still at it. Except now they were getting popular. They started doing more shows, making videos, and even selling merch. Before I knew it, they all had millions of followers on Instagram. It was awful. And what was worse? They became the laughing stock of my entire town. Everyone at school began calling us the fraud Dashian family. I became the butt of every joke, and people always asked me which one I was meant to be. I hated it. It was impossible to make any friends when I started high school, and the other kids made every day at school a living hell. But did my family care? No, of course they didn't. They were way too caught up in their own happiness to give a damn about me, especially now that they were making crazy amounts of money from it. Instead, I just had to deal with my issues on my own. I spent almost every night crying myself to sleep about how much I hated it. I wish I'd been born into a different family. I wanted to get out somehow, but I just didn't know how. Then things took a turn for the worse. My sisters and my mom started telling me I was old enough to get some surgery too. They said they could do my eyebrows and my makeup and make me look exactly like Kylie Jenner. I was so mad. How did they not understand me? After all this time, they still thought I would go along with their silly games. They kept going on and on, pressuring me into going along with them. I even gave in one time. I was feeling sad and I thought spending time with my sisters would help. I was wrong. They did my makeup and put fake tan all over me. When I finally looked in the mirror, I hated it. I didn't look anything like myself. I didn't understand why they wanted to change me so badly. Wasn't I fine just the way I was? Enough was enough. I put my foot down and I said no. I told them I didn't want anything to do with their stupid shows and I wanted to live my own life. When my mom found out, she wasn't happy. The three of them confronted me. My mom told me that I was being stupid and I wasn't supporting their work. She said that I should do what's best for the family as a whole. She said that if I didn't do what she wanted, she'd just ask my cousin Jenna to come and take my place. My cousin, who had always been jealous of me and wanted to do anything to worm her way into my family. It was the last straw. I was done being the nice one all the time while my family ruined my life. All I could think of was, what about me? When had they ever supported me? When had they ever done what was best for me? I could feel myself getting madder and madder. I stomped my feet on the ground and I screamed at my mom. I said that they had never once treated me with love or thought about how this whole thing affected me. All three of them stared at me like I was insane. Before they could say anything, however, I turned and ran up to my room. Room. Tears filled my eyes and I sobbed and sobbed into my pillow. My life was a joke. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do now. I didn't stand a chance at having a happy, normal life while I lived under the same roof as these Kardashian-obsessed women. That's when I realized the solution to all my problems. If I found a way to leave my home, I could be free of my family and live my own life exactly the way I wanted it. But how was I going to do that? I had no friends I could stay with and the only other family I had was my uncle and aunt who were Jenna's parents. I think living with Jenna would have been even worse. So I took a deep breath and I tried to gather my thoughts. How on earth could I get myself out of this mess? Then it hit me. What if I just ran away? I could find a homeless shelter somewhere or even a church that could help me. Anything was better than staying in this house a moment longer. Once I made the decision, I packed up some bags and climbed out of my bedroom window and I ran. It wasn't exactly all sunshine and rainbow, however. For starters, I didn't really realize just how cold it was outside. November probably wasn't the best time of year to run away from home, but it was already too late. I traveled to the next town over, but I had no luck finding anywhere to stay there. 
Then I tried the next town, and the next one, and the next. Eventually, I began to get sick. The rain and cold weather didn't help at all. One night, when the sun had already gone down and there was a storm brewing, I took shelter in a park underneath a bunch of trees. I couldn't sleep because of my cough, and so I stayed awake counting the leaves above me until eventually I passed out. The next thing I knew, I was waking up to doctors fussing all around me. I had a mask over my mouth pumping oxygen, and the lights were bright and harsh. I wanted to ask, where am I? But I couldn't. I felt too weak. Then everything went black. The next time I woke up, I saw a familiar face. It was my mom, and she looked awful. Her mascara was ruined by tears, and she looked like she hadn't slept in days. I reached out and touched her hand. Her whole face lit up, and she smiled over at me. She told me she was so happy to see me awake, and that she had thought she might never see me again. I smiled at her. I couldn't talk still. I was so weak. She told me that she was sorry. She knew she had let her obsession with the Kardashians go too far. She confessed that it was her way to cope after my dad passed away. She said that if she was pretending to be someone else, she didn't have to deal with the reality of living without him. Besides, trying to be exactly like Kris Jenner had given her motivation and a reason to go on. She shook her head and wiped tears from her eyes. But I should have been motivated by you. My children should have been my reason to go on. Instead, I've completely neglected you. How can you ever forgive me? She said. She began wailing then. She wept and laid herself over my body as she cried, hugging me tightly. I stroked her hair and held her close, and I smiled because I knew that things would change after that, and they did. My mom and I began spending every evening together. We ate dinner together, watched soap operas, and my mom even let me get a dog. I picked a cute Labrador puppy. My mom joked and said that we should call her Kim. I've never glared at someone so hard before. And I totally didn't call her Kim or Chloe or Kendall. I called her Hope, and that's exactly what she's been for me. People still picked on me at school about my family, however, so I transferred, and I got a fresh new start. My life went back to being good again instead of a nightmare. And even though I look back and cringe over all those years we wasted, it feels good to have my mom back again as herself.